want to talk to that person. Not whether or not the ARB did, because the ARB actually did talk to that person. My question is, wouldn't you want to talk to that person if you were investigating Benghazi? Well, it, it, I promise it is not a trick question. The answer is yes. You would want to talk to the person who authored that email. And as you just said, uh, Mr. Chairman, the ARB did. Yes, and the co-chair of the ARB called your chief of staff and told the author of that email not to go to Congress. That's my point. My, my point is the ARB did some good things. That's why our first two hearings were on making sure the recommendations by the ARB were actually implemented. But when the author of that email is going to be brought before Congress and one of the co-chairs calls your chief of staff and says, I don't think that that witness is going to be a good witness, Madam Secretary, with all due respect, she's a fact witness. Whether she's good or bad, the author of that email has a right for Congress to, to, to question them. I mean, I, that's not even a close question. So somebody can be a good person, and I have no doubt that Mr. Mullen and Mr. Pickering both are. But, but this is also what I don't doubt. I don't doubt that that phone call was made to Ms. Mills saying don't send Charlene Lamb before Congress. She's not going to make a good witness. And I don't doubt that there's not a transcript from any of the ARB interviews. And you may say, well, why does that matter? If you're going to write a report and you want to write a report with specificity and particularity, you have to cite the transcript. And I can't tell you a single question that was asked of a single ARB witness because there is no transcript. So, so my point is not that the ARB did a bad job or a good job. My point is, from a, ser from, from a standpoint of a serious investigation, it was an inadequate job. And, and, and I want to hopefully prove that to you. There, there used to be a stack up there when Mr. Smith was with us about all the previous investigations that, that Congress and the ARB had done. Did any of those previous congressional investigations or the ARB have access to your emails? Mr. Chairman, first of all, the witness you were referring to did appear before Congress. That was not my point. My well, point. Well, but you, you, your implication was that that witness was stopped from going to Congress. No, no, and in she, fact, that did not happen, Mr. No, no, Chairman. No, no, she definitely came. Yeah. No, that was, uh, that's not my implication. My implication is the co chair of what you call an independent accountability review board was calling someone he was supposed to be investigating to say, please don't send that witness to Congress. They're not going to show up well. That's my point. My point is, how can you consider that to be? I mean, well, have, look, you ever heard of a, have you ever heard of a judge calling the, the, the DA or the defense know, attorney and say, Mr. don't, Chairman, don't, don't Mr. call Chairman, that witness? I, I really don't care what you all say about me. It doesn't bother me a bit. I do care a lot about what you're implying about Admiral Mullen, and I will not sit here and hear that. Well, Admiral Mullen served this country with great distinction. He served the State Department with great distinction in being the co-chair of the Accountability Review Board, and I think his work speaks for itself. Well, and I'm, let me I'm ask sorry you about that his work. I'm no. sorry that the important work that was done by that board is held in such low regard by some members of this committee, and I deeply regret it. Are, are you doubting that he placed the phone call? Is that, is that the purpose of I know of nothing about the phone call. Well, I do because he testified before another congressional committee. He admits it was a mistake, Madam Secretary. I don't know why you can't. Well, he admits it was a mistake to call and say, don't send a fact witness before a congressional committee. Well, I think that it doesn't mean he's a bad person. It just means that when you hold up the ARB as as independent and and your chief of staff pick most <clears> of the <throat> folks on it, Patrick Kennedy had a role in picking some of the folks on the ARB, despite the fact that some people think Patrick Kennedy may have also been involved in approving or not approving. If you need to read a note from your lawyer, you're welcome to, Madam Secretary. No, it's um, it's just hard to sit here listening to the comments you're making about someone that I consider to be a great American. If he said he made a mistake, that's even more proof of what a fine gentleman he is and what a great public servant he's been. It doesn't in any way, what you're saying, impugn his service for 40 years and certainly not his service on the Accountability Review Board. I can't help it, Mr. Chairman, that you all don't like the findings of the Accountability Review Board. We had I can't two help hearings. it that you don't 
like we, the findings we had, of we all had two the other hearings. congressional committees. We, we had two hearings where we did nothing but discuss the implementation of the ARB findings, Madam Secretary. So with all due respect, we've had more hearings about the ARB findings than we have with you. So, so, so don't tell me that we don't care about the ARB. We had two hearings. My point is this. The ARB nor the previous congressional investigations had access to your emails, did they? I don't know what they had access to. I know that uh, during the time I was at the State Department, there was certainly a great effort to respond to your predecessor, uh, Congressman Issa's uh, inquiries, and many thousands of pages of information was conveyed to the Congress. And I know that the State Department has worked diligently and persistently to try to respond to the many requests that it has received. Um, and I think that uh, given the pressure and, and uh, stress of business they've been under, they have uh, you know, performed uh, as well as they could. So you will be getting, and in fact the entire world will be getting, uh, all of my emails because they're all going to be public and you will be able to read them along with everybody else. Uh, Madam Secretary, that actually was not my question. My question was whether or not the previous congressional committees and ARB had access to your emails. That was my question. 90 to 95 percent of it, my work-related emails were in the state system. If they wanted to that, see them, they would certainly have been able to do so. You know what? So. That, that, is, that is maybe the tenth time you have cited that figure today. It is. And I have not heard anyone other than you ever cite that figure. Wh who told you that 90 to 95 percent of your emails were, on the state, were in the State Department system? Who told you that? We learned that from the State Department and their analysis of, uh, the, of the emails that were already on the system. We were trying to help them close some gaps that they had. Can you but provide, already, me, can you provide me with a name? Because when I asked the State Department about 10 days ago, what's the source of that figure? They shrugged their shoulders. Well, you can look for the state.gov addresses, and uh, they certainly pop up. And right, that's and where the Inspector General report, Madam Secretary, the Inspector General report, which you can't argue by perfect analogy, but you can certainly extrapolate. The Inspector General report found that less than 1%, less than 1% of State Department emails, record emails, were captured. So they give a number of less than 1%, and you give a number of 90%. Well, I don't know what you're referring to. I can only speak about my emails, my work-related emails. Well, and let's talk about your work-related emails. We asked for them last year, and the State Department gave us eight. If they had 90 percent of yours, why did we only get eight? Well, I don't know um, initially what you asked for, but I know that they tried to be responsive. Uh, 90 to 95 percent of them were on state.gov. I understand uh, that the committee broaden the scope of their requests, and I think that in response, the State Department has been trying to provide what you have requested. In the meantime, they're going through the process of making all of my emails public. You, you think our first request, there were only eight emails responsive to our first request? I can't speak to it. I, I believe, I, I I believe can... your first request was for Benghazi, and I believe that uh, the State Department did a diligent search, Then I believe you expanded it to Libya and weapons and maybe a few other uh, terms, and I believe they well, conducted our, our a jurisdiction diligent... hasn't, hasn't grown, Madam Secretary. Our jurisdiction is the <laughs> same thing it was. Let me ask you this. You, you say that you turned over everything. Um, I don't get a chance to watch you a lot on television, but when I see you're, you are interviewed, you make a point of saying, I turned over everything. All my work-related emails. How do you know that? I know that because there was a, an exhaustive search done uh, under the uh, supervision of my attorneys, and that is uh, exactly the outcome. We turned over every work-related email. In fact, as somebody referred to earlier, we turned over too many. In the State Department and the National Archives said there are 1,246 out of the 30,000 plus that they've already determined uh, did not need to be turned over. And you have Thank a you really order, good Chairman. group of attorneys which makes Chairman, me wonder me how they missed 15 of them. Well, if you're talking about Mr. Blumenthal, which I assume you are, 
he had some that I didn't have, and I had some that he didn't have, and he, I was under no obligation to make any of his emails available unless I decided they were work-related. And the ones that I decided that were work-related, I forwarded to the state.gov accounts of the people with whom I worked. Madam Secretary, is there any question that the 15 that, he, that James Cole turned over to us were work-related? There was no ambiguity about that. They were work-related. Well, they were from a personal friend, not any official government, uh, not any government official, and they were, I determined on the basis of looking at them what I thought was work-related and what wasn't, and some I didn't even have time to read, Mr. So Chairman. So are you Mr. telling Chairman, me regular the 15... Order. Are you telling me Mr. that the Chairman? 15, um, I, I will tell the general lady from California that I'm going to take um, a little bit extra time, just like everybody else has, and <clears> we <throat> can either do it this round, we can either do it this round, or we can do it next round. May I make an, in, a simple inquiry about how many more minutes the chairman has? Um, the fewer the interruptions, the quicker I can get done. I'll put it to you that way. Okay. How's that? I'm just the 15, mindful of the time. My question to you on the 15 is, did your lawyers find them and decide that they weren't work-related, or did they not find them? Well, I, I don't know why he had emails I didn't, and I don't know why, apparently, I had emails he didn't. And all I can tell you is that I turned over every work-related email in uh, my possession. All right. I'm going to make two more observations, and then, <clears throat> then we're going we're gonna to call it a night. Um, the first observation that I would make is that when you speak to the public, you say, I turned over everything. That's, for the most part, a direct quote. When you talk to the public, you say, I turned over everything. When you talk to the court, you say, while I do not know what information may be responsive for purposes of this lawsuit, I have directed that all my emails on ClintonEmail.com in my custody that were or potentially were federal records be provided to the Department of State and on information and belief that was done. Why the different explanation depending on who you're talking to? Well, one is a shorthand, Mr. Chairman. Well, why not just tell the, the court I turned over everything? Well, you know how lawyers are. They use more words, perhaps, than they need. Uh, trust me, I know that, I and they might. charge you for every one of them. Yeah, I'm well aware of that, Mr. Chairman, and, and the clock is ticking. Well... <laughs>